What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Sunday, October 16th, 2022, about 7.27 p.m. California time out here along the West Coast. Latest quake shows a 1.5 earthquake up into the Alaska area. Notice that we're still seeing some movement out here on the big island of Hawaii. Let's go ahead and jump into the latest activity there at the Mauna Loa Volcano. This is the latest update uh, from the USGS Volcano source. Uh, looks like this was put out earlier this morning uh, time frame. Still seen continued uh, earthquake activity in this little swarm. No major movement. Uh, doesn't look like anything other than some small microquakes have been ongoing over the past 48 hours or so. Looks like 150 aftershocks in the Pahala area. Uh, 20 of those were greater than 2.5 and 4 have been greater than an M3. So looks like the GPS instruments there at the summit and on the flanks of Mauna Loa continue to measure inflation at rates elevated since about mid-September. However, tilt meters at the summit are not showing significant surface deformation over the past week. So of course still kind of monitoring this activity at the Mauna Loa uh, volcano there on the big island. A quick glance at a local seismograph station we'll go ahead and use this one out here uh, see what we got for the earthquake activity past 12 hours of movement there um, still seeing it obviously quite a bit of earthquake activity and that's uh, been an ongoing thing again no major changes to take note of though at the uh, Mauna Loa volcano all right let's go ahead and see what the USGS has reported out here Looks like a uh, 2.1 coming in within the last hour. Uh, I know we've seen some uh, earthquake activity there on the seismograph station there at the Hot Caves, which is situated right around here, right, right around the uh, Pahala area. Uh, so a little bit of movement showing up on the seismograph and also here being reported near Pahala. Nothing up here at Mauna Loa currently far as any uh, major adjustments go. So just watching it pretty closely, keeping us on our toes. Notice out here along the Western Pacific, not a whole lot of development right now. Uh, looks like a 4.2 coming in. Uh, this one, this earthquake here was actually from uh, yesterday. Up here in the north, seen this uh, earlier this morning time frame, a 4.2 in Japan. And over here around the Philippines. These are about the only recent earthquakes. Haven't really seen too much uptick tonight or during the day for all that matter so things are a little on the uh, quiet side over here along the western pacific over here around the cocos plate of course we did see that 6.3 coming in they did have a little bit of aftershock activity it looks like a 4.3 um very close to the main earthquake to the epicenter there not too often do we see larger quakes out here away from the plate boundary so it's a little on the odd side uh, around the cocos ridge area as uh, far as movement around the Middle America Trench, Central Mid, uh, what do we got here? I'll stand by for a second here. I'm trying to find the latest one. And there's not really a whole lot of latest ones uh, here on the map. Looks like earlier this afternoon, did see a 4.5 near Panama. Uh, about 30 kilometers deep. But even so, some of this is some older movement. Um, further east here around the Caribbean plate up around the Puerto Rico area got one earthquake um, coming into the Puerto Rico trench this one almost right smack dab on it looks like a 2.7 at 10 kilometers deep and typical swarming up here or down here I should say around the southwestern portion of the uh, Puerto Rico area South America not a whole lot going on got a 4.1 that one was from yesterday down here in the South Sandwich Islands, 4.9 from yesterday as well. So a lot of these earthquakes were from late last night, kind of looking at uh, where this is going to take place right now. Uh, kind of stuck in a, uh, um, a middle teeter-totter type event right now. Again, West Coast activity. What do we got here? One earthquake around the Crescent City area. Of course, that's inland. This 2.7 struck just to the west of the Cascadia Megathrust Zone, 103 kilometers deep below the plate, uh, below the Gorda Plate. And that's a little odd because the um, subduction zone itself is right about here. And I can understand deeper movement quakes here, 
uh, as we move inland, but specifically on this plate, that's a little on the odd side uh, to see some deeper movement right here. 103 kilometers deep for a 2.7. And that one was coming in, uh, looks like earlier this afternoon time frame. Just a little weird. Uh, one earthquake up here off the co or uh, on the coast range. That one uh, looks like that was coming in last night. Not a whole lot of further development out here throughout the Pacific Northwest or Northern California. The um, Clear Lake Volcanic Field up here, the hydrothermal operations are continuing with that earthquake swarm. Uh, looking our way down south here around Mammoth Lakes, we've got a little bit of activity kicking up here just outside of the super volcano. Long Valley Super Volcano, latest quake shows a 1.3. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and check out the Long Valley seismograph stations here and see what we got. Uh, of course, the Caldera region sits in here. We'll go ahead and pick up this station uh, right here, see if we can figure this out. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. See if there's any uh, major swarming going on that uh, maybe they're not reporting, but it doesn't look like it. Just a handful of little earthquakes here around the Long Valley Super Volcano. No major adjustments, no major movement. And it looks like they did a pretty decent job of reporting all of them that has struck throughout the last 24 hours there. Ridgecrest area, little spotty movement there around that fracture zone. The Wheeler Ridge around the grapevine. We'll see ones and uh, doesn't, <coughs> doesn't look like anything's too recent earlier this afternoon and overnight time frame last night. Got one earthquake here on the Garlock Fault Zone. That's a major shear zone across this area of the state. Uh, you, whenever you see this type of boundary right here, right, you got a couple different, well, we know which direction the plates are moving, but this is kind of acting as a spring, so to speak, I think. And um, I still think this area is definitely uh, likely to see a pretty large earthquake on the Garlock Fault Zone. Uh, which could, you never know, could trigger the uh, southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. San Jacinto Fault Zone and uh, looks like portions of the Elsinore <coughs> Fault Zone as well. Seeing a little bit of activity. <coughs> Always losing my voice. I'm not for sure. Maybe it's a change in the weather. We only got up to uh, about 78 degrees today here in California. It's kind of nice. Nothing going on specifically throughout the southern branch of the San Andreas. A couple small microquakes south of there and the border. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick here since uh, kind of looking at the Wyoming area. And there is the 6.3 that struck earlier this morning time frame. And I, something's going on with the technical glitches there. Let's see those little paws in the uh, data. Not for sure what it is. But it's showing up across a good portion of the park there. And it looks like it's a, some type of internet issue there with the servers. Either way, uh, the uh, signature there from the 6.3 earlier this morning. As far as earthquake activity goes, yeah, there's some small microquakes. And also one uh, popping off. Kind of looks like it's over towards the western portion of the uh, park. Let me see what that is. It could be this one in Idaho. I bet you it's that one. 0104 UTC time. 0104. All right, well, let's double check and see. 0104, probably. Looks like uh, right on cue there for the UTC time. Notice the 01. Uh, a little bit, a couple minutes later, we get that signature. So that is the uh, 2.6 there in Idaho. Looks like that's just off of the. Um, let's see here. Kind of well northeast of the Sawtooth Fault Zone. A little bit closer over here to some of these other ones. Uh, but there's definitely a bunch of faults up there in Idaho as well. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas, very spotty movement. Not a whole lot going on through Canada. And uh, Alaska looks about the same. Just some microquakes throughout the uh, beautiful state up there. No major adjustments, no major movement. We do have a... Uh, what we got here? 4.7 coming in here to the Philippines. Some deeper activity. That could be our first indicator of um, these plates being set back into motion here as far as the daily earthquake activity. Might want to watch the Philippine plate here. That deeper movement, of course, will add further strain 
within the Philippines area along the Philippine Trench here. Uh, and also areas up here to the uh, East China Sea region. So we'll watch that pretty closely, see if that uh, plays out. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Trimmer activity tonight along the Cascadia. 298 epicenters of trimmer. Again, it looks like it's uh, centered right in the, well, I don't want to say Central Oregon because the folks over there in Bend are like, that's not Central Oregon. <laughs> I love Bend, but yeah, I got to say this correctly. The Central Coast, I should say, not Central Oregon, Central Coast of Oregon there. Uh, beautiful area as well. I like Bend. And that's kind of looks like that's where it's uh, kicking off right now. 298 epicenters. We do have a little bit of trimmer down into the very end. Kind of looks like around me. Um, just north of Chico here. Of course, the subduction zone here. Cascadia kind of subducts underneath the North American plate here. Uh, and that's pretty much about the limit far as south goes. It doesn't stretch any further south. So that's an extreme south um, trimmer event there. Again, most of this confined to the uh, coastal range there of Oregon. Check out, uh, what should we check out tonight? Mount Adams? Haven't really checked that out in a while. Man, maybe we won't. <laughs> I forgot there's no, there's hardly any seismograph stations up there. Look at that. They must not be too concerned about it. Well, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got for this one here. A, uh, looks like a one component short period station stagman ridge mount adams area who knows if it's even function functioning uh this is some type of error issue there technical issue it looks like on the digital aspect of it yeah yeah it looks like there's a little sequence of occurs every who knows what every day it looks like uh, earthquake activity, though, man, it's very hard to say from this. That doesn't look like earthquake activity at all. Um, and this is very unreliable and far far as um, seeing any type of seismic activity there. And that's uh, about the only one, at least for this monitoring station. Uh, they're at the um, Mount Adams area. But we'll go ahead and check out Mount Rainier and see what's going on up here. Check out this uh, southern one, see if we got anything... Uh, Mildred, Mildred Point. A little crooked, but hey, it's picking up some very small microquakes, it looks like, over the last couple hours. Let's see what we got for the remainder of the day or for the previous UTC day. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. There's the uh, signature of that 6.3. Pretty awesome. Uh, as these waves travel across the uh, the surface of the Earth, these S waves kicking up there pretty nicely. But as uh, far as localized seismic activity, doesn't look like it. No uh, major swarms, no major earthquake activity to report there up at that volcano. Solar weather activity, well, not a whole lot to report uh, at all. 45% chance of a sea flare, M flare. Uh, below that at 5%, X-Flare probably non-existent there at 1%. Looks like a uh, potential G1 or uh, 3 to 4 KP index here tonight. Nothing major, just a little bit of unrest potentially kicking up at the higher latitudes there around uh, Canada, Greenland, Iceland area. All getting in on some pretty cool activity, maybe. Not a huge chance, but uh, it's up there a little bit. Solar flare activity, uh, that's a, uh, another story. Not a whole lot to report here. Uh, these are not uh, looking all that exciting. Everything looks pretty stable amongst these sunspots. Uh, 3124, maybe, maybe uh, we'll be blasting off some sea flares, but we'll keep an eye on that. And Other than that, folks, let me see what we got coming around the bend. See if there's anything else. I, I really don't see it. Maybe a little older sunspot, maybe a former sunspot, I think, here coming around uh, along the southeastern portion of the sun. But there's no major sunspots that we're looking at or monitoring here, at least at least for the next 
week. Unless something drastic changes there, but I don't think so. All right, folks. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we'd definitely better watch that Philippine plate there with some of that activity coming in. There's some movement right there that the USGS didn't report. Looks like some fours. Um, and I don't remember seeing that many fours there from the uh, USGS. So a lot of this is EMSC including that latest one that just came in and some deeper activity for that region. Again, rings in the red are much, much older. In fact, that 5.0 is probably going to drop off pretty soon. It's looking pretty dark. Uh, and some of these um, pinkish, I guess, light red, I guess, here. Uh, that was from this morning. That's kind of an older earthquake, and that will drop off tomorrow at the 24-hour threshold. Again, white rings are... Um, Look at that deep quake there. That's the one I'm talking about in the Gorda plate. That's, it's, uh, I don't see that too often there. But uh, anyway, white rings are the uh, newer quakes. And of course, the green flag up there, the most recent earthquake on the map. So, all right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We're going to just kind of relax a little bit here and enjoy the cooler weather. If you, uh, if I can, it's not too bad. I mean, upper 70s is pretty decent today. Going to be a little chilly, at least for California standards. It's supposed to be around 51 tonight. I'm a cold weather guy, so bring on the... I would love to say bring on the snow, but we just don't get that here. At least here in the Sacramento Valley. So, it's unfortunate, but I, I love the cold weather. I think I need to move to Alaska. But then again, Kansas, right? Kansas get those ice storms in the wintertime. So, Kansas, it may be. All right, guys, have a good night. Well, I'll, I'll be quiet. Catch you guys a little bit later. Peace out, everyone. Have a good night.